Welcome to another episode of Hardware Lens. This is part two of our DDR4 overclocking series using our 10600K gaming PC. In our last video, we were able to hit a maximum frequency of 3800 MHz on our system. Uh, through uh, some thorough testing, we were able to determine that this frequency was limited by our CPU's memory controller and not the RAM or the motherboard itself. So in this video we are going to tighten down some of the timings and try and extract as much performance as we can from this RAM now that we know that we are limited to a frequency of 3800 MHz. We are going to be overclocking the uh, Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 4400C19 kits and uh, this is a great kit that I've talked about before. Um, it's uh, very affordable. We picked it up for uh, about $129 uh, for 16 gigs of DDR4 4400. It's Samsung b die RAM, so it's uh, some very good RAM, and there's a, there's a link in the description for that as well. We are going to be referencing the GitHub guide that we mentioned in our last video, and there's a link in the description for that as well. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to set the TRRDS as per the guide to 4. We're using the extreme setting. Next, we'll set the TRRDL to 6. Then we'll set the TFAW to 16. and the TWR to 10. And the TRTP to 8. Okay, so we'll leave the uh, rest of the timings alone and uh, we'll run a stress test on this right now. So we're going to want to save a profile first, of course, especially with RAM. Uh, RAM overclocking, you have to clear the CMOS uh, pretty frequently. So make sure you save a profile. All right, so let's see if it'll post. Okay, so we got a good post and we're into Windows now. So we'll fire up Memtest Pro again with uh, 12 threads and we'll see if it's stable. Let's uh, wait here for our 12 threads to load up, make sure it loads okay. Alright, and there's our 12 threads, so we'll let this run. Okay, so as you can see, we've been running MemTest for quite a while now. We're just under 900% coverage, and uh, we've got zero errors, so that's definitely stable. So next, we're going to boot into uh, BIOS and uh, change the command rate to 1T, and we'll run the stress test again and see if that's stable. It's important when you do memory overclocking, you want to make sure you uh, run a stress test every time you change anything. I know it's very tedious and that's that's why I don't go so crazy with some of the other uh, tertiary timings just because it takes forever. But you really want to make sure because you, if you don't stress test this and then you have instability down the line, you'll have no idea where it's coming from and it'll drive you crazy and you'll just end up setting everything back to default because you don't want to deal with it. All right, so here we are. Uh, we've got a good post. Uh, let's see if we get into Windows okay. All right, we're in Windows. So uh, as you can see, we uh, sped it up a little bit. We've got MemTest running here, 12 threads. We're waiting on our 12 threads, rather, to load. And same thing, we'll uh, let that run again. And we'll see what our results are. All right, and we've got our 12 threads loaded up and ready to go. 
Okay guys, so here we are. It's the next morning here and uh, we're completely stable here running at uh, 1T command rate. Uh, we're at 2000% coverage. We let it run pretty long uh, because it got late and we had to let it run overnight. So it's definitely stable. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is uh, go back into BIOS and start uh, tightening down some of the primary timings. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set the cast latency to 15 and we'll uh, see if that posts there. Okay, so we had a good post and uh, made it into Windows. Let's fire up Memtest Pro once again. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to fire up these threads real quick. Uh, we're not going to run a full test uh, because we're not done uh, tweaking the cast latency. So we're going to just see if we can get all the threads to load uh, with no errors, and then we'll, we'll tweak it down again some more. And we'll keep doing that until we can't get into Windows anymore. Okay, almost done. Okay, so no errors, threads are loaded up. We'll go ahead and stop the test. And uh, we'll see what see if we can go a little bit lower. Alright, so let's try 14. Okay, so we've got a good post, made it into Windows. Try again. Same thing, let our threads load up. Okay, so 12 threads loaded. We'll restart and try and uh, go a little lower. Okay, so let's go ahead and set the uh, cast latency down to 13 now. See if we can get it to post here. Okay, so we got a good post and we're into Windows. Let's fire up Memtest once again. Okay, and we'll load up CPU-C just to verify that everything is as we set in BIOS. And you can see that it is. We've got a cast latency of 13 there. So that's pretty good. Pretty good for 3800. Alright, so all threads are loaded up. Let's try and go for 12. Okay, trying 12 now. Okay, so as you can see there, if you caught that message, uh, we did not post at 12 so it, it tried to train for a while and then uh, restarted and uh, it, it didn't work so uh, no post at 12 so we'll go back to 13 for our cast latency and uh, at this point now we're gonna run memtest pro again and we're gonna look for maximum stability so we're gonna let it run for a long time and that will validate our cast latency stability test Okay, just waiting on all the threads to load up here. Okay, so as you can see here we are at 1000% uh, coverage, cast latency 13, and we are stable. So that's pretty good. I think, uh, I think 13 is pretty impressive for 3800, so now let's start tweaking some of the other primaries. Uh, we'll 
We'll tweak the TRCD. We'll set that to 13. Set the TRP to 13. I set those two the same. I don't tweak them individually. You can, but uh, I'm I'm lazy, so I'm gonna. Uh, before I do that, uh, let's set a let's set a profile here for our, our stable cast latency 13 setting. Uh, it's easy to forget to do. Okay, so now that we have that set, we'll go back in there and we'll try for 13. See if we can get them to match the cast latency. Okay, so nope, we got an error. Not not going to work. Okay, let's try 14. Okay, so we made it into Windows, okay, at 14. Start our test again. Okay, just waiting on our threads to load up here. All right, so we'll let this run. Okay, so it's been running for a little while. As you can see here, we've got some errors. So 14 is not going to be stable. We're going to have to go and uh, raise that back, back up. So let's try 15. Okay, I'll try again. All right, and it didn't post that time, strangely. Posted at 14, but not at 15. Sometimes that happens. Okay, so we'll try 16 instead. And same thing, no post that time either. We've got no choice but to try 17. Okay, we got a good post that time. We made it into Windows. Fire up Memtest Pro again. Looking for stability at 17. And fire up CPU Z. Okay, so there's our timings. All right, so as you can see here, we're uh, just under 900% again. We've got no errors, so we are stable with TRCD and TRP at 17. All right, so let's uh, tweak some more. We'll go back into the BIOS now. So TRAS, we are using the formula in GitHub. We'll set it to 32. And uh, I'll explain where we get that number from. Okay, so we do that. Uh, where we got that number from, the 32, was the cast latency plus the TRCD plus 2. And that's coming from the GitHub guide that we have referenced. And uh, you can see here in CPUZ, we've got it running at 32. And uh, we're going to fire up CPU Z. See how that runs. You could always go lower than that if you, you can try going lower than that. But uh, for the purposes of this guide, uh, we're going to say it's good enough if we can, if we can meet the recommendations in the guide we're following. Because again, the uh, TRAS is based on the other two timings, which we have already found our limit. So we're going to assume that uh, 32 is going to be the limit there, even though it may not be for sure. And as you can see here, we're uh, over 900% coverage and zero errors. So we are stable with TRAS at 32. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the TRFC. And again, we get the uh, we start off with nanoseconds in the guide uh, for Samsung B die. We have anywhere from 160 to 180 nanoseconds. So we'll try the lower end. We'll see if it's stable at 160. And uh, we're going to use that formula again, which is going to be the nanoseconds multiplied by the memory frequency divided by 2,000. So we take uh, 160 multiplied by 3,800, divide that by 2,000. and we get 304 so let's try that out okay good post got into windows And this is why it's important to overclock memory in a systematic fashion because, uh, as you can see, the last two timings were based on uh, stable numbers that we just found for the previous timings. So TRFC is, is based on your, your uh, memory frequency, and TRAS was based on our uh, primary timings. Okay, so we'll fire up memtest again, and we'll see if it's stable there. So that's going to be uh, the last thing we tweak. We'll see how it does, okay. Okay, so as you can see here, we are stable with uh, our 160 nanosecond time with uh, three or four clocks for row refresh cycle time TRFC. Uh, we've been running overnight again and uh, over almost 3,000 percent now with no errors. So this RAM is stable. Uh, we've come quite a long way from where we started. We started at 3,800 megahertz with uh, uh, 19, 19, 39 timings. Uh, cast latency of 19 and we were able to clock down the cast latency to 13 and TRCD to 17, TRP to 17, TRAS to 32 and we're running at a 1T command rate now. Uh, that should offer a pretty substantial performance improvement uh, versus where we started from. So these are pretty tight timing so we, we uh, were kind of disappointed that we were limited by the CPU memory controller. We can only hit 3800 megahertz on this uh, system, but uh, that's fine. That's still that's still going to be uh, more than adequate for for whatever you're doing. That's not bad RAM speed at all, and uh, especially with these nice tight timings. That's the good thing about uh, Samsung B die RAM. So even if you can't hit the highest uh, speeds, you can still tighten up the timings at the lower speeds and kind of make up for it. So uh, this system uh, should still perform very well in terms of memory. And that will conclude part two of our memory overclocking on this build. And uh, we thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next video. Thanks. Yeah.